Alles klar, Kinder? Ei, ei, Captain! Geht das nicht lauter? Ei, ei, Captain! Oh! Hi, kids. It's Bob, the train conductor here. I'm here today to talk to you about high-speed bullet train chassis. We're here with our friend, Fred, the Shinkansen. Fred, can you tell us about yourself? Of course I can. My primary function is to carry passengers up to a maximum speed of 320 kilometers per hour, while ensuring safety and comfort of everyone on board. I was designed very carefully by engineers and analyzed structurally and aerodynamically. After all the analysis, they chose to create me out of aluminum. Details are company secrets. Shh. To put me together, chassis tubes were welded for maximum strength. Thank you, Fred. Why are you here today? I am here today because I need a new skeleton. Okay, boys and girls, let's help Fred choose a new chassis. Can you list off some functional requirements and design specifications for Fred based off of what he just told you? No? Okay then, let me tell you! These requirements were chosen based off of some suggestions from Fred's friends, the other Shinkansen. His friends are often very strong, light, durable, fast, comfortable, and quiet. However, Fred spent all his money on a new paint job and he is very broke. So, the following requirements were prioritized as the minimum Fred needs to get back to work. Fred needs to be strong and tough to protect everyone on board. But, he needs to be light so that he can run really fast and efficiently. Fred also has a limited budget, so we want to find the lowest cost material for him. Then, lastly, Fred's skeleton should not degrade from water or UV rays. So, from this list, we can see these are some useful equations we need to derive the MPI. The first equation is used to find the weight of one beam. The second one is the deflection formula for one chassis beam. The third equation is the second moment of inertia for a beam, and cost is expressed as cost per kilogram multiplied by mass. And then lastly, but not least, the equation for K stands for fracture toughness, and it's related to crack length and stress. Here are the following MPIs that should be derived by relating the equations above. This is used to find a suitable material. These equations were obtained from various online resources as well as the Ashby textbook appendix. Notice how all the equations can be related using width and height as the free variable, which in turn can be used to generate the MPI equations. You got all that, kids? Well, we're moving on anyways. Here's the spec sheet from Fred. Oops. Hi kids, it's Greg here. I just came back from plotting all this in CES. We can see that the aluminum 5000 series has the most desirable properties, but the material is not heat treatable. So it's lame. Fred wanted a cool chassis that was heat treated. Now that means we get to decide between the 2000 series versus the 6000 series. Fred should be tougher than he is stronger. So let's go with the 2000 series. Specifically, 2024 T351. Strength and more with 2024. 2024 T351 has the highest performance for toughness, with a good value for yield strength, low cost, and density, all which Fred needs. Precipitation hardening was chosen as the main form of heat treatment because it can change the material property of a metal such as strength without significant changes to its density. As well, the process gives us less control over exactly how we want these properties to change. We first start off with solution treatment. In this step, we homogenize the aluminum alloy into one alpha phase at 495 degrees Celsius, seen from the phase diagram to prepare the material for quenching.
Then we want to quench the aluminum in cold water that is less than 30 degrees Celsius. Make sure the bath doesn't reach above 38 degrees Celsius or the quenching process will not work. This process is a general guideline from the ASM handbook for quenching of aluminum. The temperature should not be above 30 degrees or else the aluminum will form unwanted secondary phases since the cooling rate will not be fast enough. These secondary phases will change the material's mechanical properties and we only want a purely quenched aluminum alloy for later age hardening. Typical aluminum heat treat, the parts will be loaded in a basket. They are loaded up into the furnace. They have a dwell time at temperature. And then once that happens, we will roll the quench tank underneath the furnace. The door opens and we drop into the quench tank. And typically we have a seven second delay time we have to meet. Some things are a little bit longer, but typically it's within seven seconds you have to be quenched. And then it sits for five minutes, dwell in the quench tank, and then it's rolled out from underneath the furnace. And then we rinse the parts, unload them and do work to them if required, or they go right into the aging oven then. And we do have some customers, we do the solution, send it to them, and then they have their own aging oven. After quenching, we now have a super saturated solid solution. This makes the alloy optimal for age hardening. We will naturally age this alloy for 46 days from negative 25 degrees to 25 degrees Celsius, according to the aging curve. This is done to obtain a high toughness instead of strength. Even better, we don't need to use a furnace, unlike artificial aging, so that decreases the cost. From the aging curve, we can see that the natural age curve starts to level off around 100 hours, which is around 4 days. At 100 hours, if the alloy was artificially aged, it would have already been overaged. So, by natural aging, we get a lower strength and leave the material underaged so that it will not overage itself during operation. Then, to increase dimensional stability and ductility, we will want to stress relief the alloy by stretching it from 1 to 4%. And most importantly, this will prevent premature failure of Fred's skeleton. We don't want that now, do we? <laughs> Lastly, to make sure Fred's skeleton is resistant to water and UV rays, we will clad it with aluminum. Aluminum is a good cladding material because it does not have a difference in potential with respect to 2024. And without doing anything, it will passivate to create a protective oxide layer that is corrosion resistant. Now, let's go present our findings to Fred. Hiya Fred, what do you think about your new skeleton material? I love it, Bob. Who's Bob? Oh no, what have you done with Bob?